morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. That's the first one, this is our first flow function integral. <laughs> oh, I just love saying integral. Mm, it's so nice. Hello, let's solve math problems if you are watching. Your pronunciation is absolutely godlike. So yeah, this right here is the first one. That's the first flow function integral. Oh, I, I can't stop, this wasn't even on purpose. This is the first flow function integral that we are doing on this channel right here. And we are going to dive right in. For this, I would like to make use of the fact that we can express the flow function in the positive reals. And yeah, our interval, our open intervals from zero to infinity, those are the positive reals, can be expressed using a superposition of the um, unit step function. We have talked about this before and yeah, we have derived it a little bit. So yeah, here goes. Let's rewrite this tauish integral. Yeah, this time I seriously use tau on this one as nothing but an integral from zero to infinity. And you might wonder why we have s right here to the power of s plus one. Well, whenever there's an s, there's going to be a zeta function, okay? That, that's a little rule of thumb right here. Okay, integral from zero to infinity of one over tau to the s plus one power. And then we have the sum running from k equals to one to infinity of the unit step function of tau minus k d tau detox. Okay. And well, we seriously don't give a shit about the interchange of summation and integration. We are just going to do it. Stuff is strictly positive right here. So we can probably for me need this shit. You guys just laugh when I say Fubi need this shit. Gucci, so Gucci. So let's just bring the summation to the outside for now. That's nothing but this infinity boy of the integral from zero to infinity. So this other infinity boy, that's the infinity grill right here and that's the infinity boy. And then we have one over tau to the s plus one of power unit step function of tau minus k integrated with respect to tau. And now I want you guys to consider something. Our tau runs from zero to infinity. And right here, our k runs from one to infinity, okay? What happens if our tau right here is going to be less than k, okay? If our tau is less than k. So we don't really know, uh, for example, let's say our tau is 0 0.3, okay? Then our tau is definitely less than k, for example, in this case. If our tau is less than k, then for our unit step function we have, just as a little reminder, 0 whenever tau is less than k and 1 whenever our tau is greater or equal to k. Okay, this is something we have derived last time. So whenever our tau is strictly less than k, then we have that our unit step function is going to variate to zero. Meaning we are going to break this integral up into one integral running from zero to k. This interval, on this interval, all the tau values are strictly less than k. u tau minus k over tau to the s plus one power integrate with respect to tau plus the other part. And we can do this under the condition that this integral exists, this integral converges and it does under certain conditions. We're going to talk about this in a second. Plus the integral from k to infinity of u tau minus k over tau to the s plus one of power integrated with respect to tau. Like I said, on this interval, our unit step function is going to be zero. Then we have a definite integral times zero. Well, that's a constant times zero in any case, meaning this integral is going to vary to zero. On the other hand, on this interval from k to infinity, we have that our unit step function is going to be one just because our tau is greater or equal to our k. Meaning this thing right here is just one and we are going to end up with a sum running from k equals to one to infinity of, I'm going to rewrite this a bit, integral from k to infinity of tau to the negative s plus one power 
integrated with respect to tau. That's just integrating a polynomial. That's absolutely trivial. Sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of. So this is negative s, negative 1, raising it by 1, this power, and putting this down here. So this is tau to the negative s power over negative s from k to infinity. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeezy. That was not too hard at the moment. Now we have to do some arguing, you could say. So at first we have this limit and I'm going to yeah, uh, I'm going to write it out at first a little bit. We have the limit s tau approaches infinity of tau to the negative s power over negative s times the sum running from k equals to 1 to, okay, that's not too rigorous at all, but I just want to shed some light on this thing right here. So there's probably a more rigorous argument regarding this, but what I want to do, I want to set tau up here, okay? I want to have tau up here as the upper index, just for convergence purposes. I know tau is a continuous variable, but we don't give a shit about that. There's probably a more rigorous argument. And now if we let the limit approach infinity, well, we are going to have this limit that we want right here, and also we are going to have our infinity up here. This right here is the empty sum, so this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, but tau times, okay? This thing right here is going to variate to tau. Like I said, it's not too rigorous, but I just want to make it kind of intuitive for you guys. Uh, minus, our second part that we are going to have, minus and minus is going to become positive. So positive sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of tau to the negative s power over s, okay? We are going to deal with this in a second, this is basically our final result, but we have to talk about this right here a bit more. So regarding this limit, we are going to have the limit as tau approaches infinity of, okay, this is going to give us tau to the negative s plus 1 power over negative s. 1 over negative s really doesn't quite matter when it comes to the limit. So we are just going to take a look at the limit as tau approaches infinity. I'm going to denote it as capital L, tau to the negative s plus 1 power. The question here is, under which conditions would this converge? I said we are going to deal with Riemann zeta function and you can analytically continue this function to the complex numbers. So without any restrictions, let's say our s is element of the complex numbers right here. Okay, then this thing right here, this tau, would only go to zero, would converge if our real part of negative s plus one would be less than zero, okay? Th then we would have one over tau to the s something power, you could say. And if we let this go to infinity, we would have one over infinity, which goes to zero in the limit. We can rewrite this a bit more. You can take a look at complex numbers. So if you have um, two plus i plus one, okay, let's say this is our s right here. Then the real part of s plus one is nothing but, well, three in this case, but what you can also do, you can say that this is the same as the real part of s plus one. Okay, this is something you can do. So that's equivalent to saying we have the real part of negative s plus one, which you want to be less than zero. Okay, also our real part is kind of linear, so you can just multiply both sides by negative one to get that the real part of s minus one is greater than zero. This turns around the order relation and now you can add one on both sides. So the real part of S is bound to be greater than one in this case. And this right here is our um, condition for convergence. So under the condition that the real part of S is strictly greater than one, we are going to get that, well, this limit right here exists. Overall that our integral exists in the first place, converges. So this thing right here is going to go to zero in the limit. Okay, coolio, this goes to zero under this condition. Meaning we are going to end up with our integral i. This right here is our integral i, okay. I forgot to um, 
give it a name, a new notation, it's nothing but sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of, I'm going to put the 1 over s to the outside, and this is nothing but 1 over tau to the s power. And you know exactly what this is. This right here is 1 over s times the Riemann zeta function of s. And this thing right here, this integral, actually exists for the real part of s being created in 1. And then we are done. This has been our first floor function integral. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy the show. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those beautiful t-shirts I created. Also support the channel on Patreon. Also take a look at the website and my second channel and blah blah blah. No matter what you do, I'm until the next video. Have a floor function day. See ya.